Tai Chi Chuan is an old martial art that has existed for many centuries. It started in China, spread through Asian countries, and in the past two centuries throughout the world. Practicing Tai Chi Chuan helps to build a firm, flexible and calm body and harmony of the spirit. Tai Chi Chuan is a defense martial art and meditation in motion at the same time. It contains countless techniques and fighting forms. It also contains the use of weapons such as sabers, swords, spears, sticks and others, maybe more typical for certain styles. Sun Shou or Sun Da. It involves a special way of training called pushing hands, which is actually an organized way of pushing each other using circular movements. It is very useful later when using techniques. It is not necessary to learn all the forms. Different forms have certain internals, their own characteristics, so we can get closer to understanding this ancient art despite its diversity. Tai Chi Chuan and its philosophy can become a way of life. After a couple of years of practice, we can improve and regain health and learn how to be calm and clear. Tai Chi Chuan can be interpreted as the grand ultimatum or the highest martial art. It is based on three main principles of Tai Chi philosophy. The changing triagrams described in the Book of Changes or Yi Jing, Tai Chi diagram, five elements. Through regular training we can get to know and understand some concepts of Chinese philosophy, which can be hard to explain and verbalize without experiencing them. Although a number of masters and teachers of Tai Chi Chuan are considered to be the authors, the greatest of them is Zhang San Feng. There are many stories and exaggerations about him, but some facts and the description of his path speak of a great man of that time. Zhang San Feng finished the state exams in the time of Yuan dynasty and was in position to take a high place in the state administration. But to the amazement of many, he decided otherwise. He retreated to the mountains and after his parents' death he traveled through country for 30 years visiting old temples. Finally, he settled down in midwestern part of China on the green mountain Baoji. In that time, he was practicing and mastering Shaolin Chuan. Shaolin Chuan is a system created in a famous Shaolin Buddhist temple in northern province Henan. The temple was built in the time of Wei dynasty that ruled in the 3rd century AD when Indian patriarch Bodhidharma Da Mo arrived to China in 527, he stayed at the temple for many years. He found the monks there that were too weak and lethargic to endure his discipline. Two famous works were created here, Yi Jin Jing, Exercises for Changing Muscles and Tendons, and Xi Suao Jing, internal exercises for so-called washing of the bone marrow and brain. It was a sort of qi gong form, where we lead the qi or internal energy in those parts. At that time he was also teaching a martial art called 18 Hands of Buddha. With it he laid the foundations for further development of Shaolin martial arts. After the Mo's death, the monks parted ways and Shaolin Chuan was forgotten for many centuries, until Chiao Huan Shangrin started teaching it again in the temple. Besides the 18 hands of Buddha, he added a part of his own art to Shaolin Chuan, developing it into 72 hands of Buddha. One of his students was also Zan San Feng, who stayed at the temple for 10 years, mastering Shaolin Chuan. The knowledge of martial art was gathered in five chuans. Chuan can mean system, style or fist. They were named after the best skills of certain animals. Dragon Chuan 
Tiger Chuan, Leopard Chuan, Snake Chuan, Stork Chuan. As we can see, all the styles, names and everything else that goes with the martial art comes from Shaolin Chuan. The main difference between Taiji Chuan and other martial arts is that Zan San Fink added the Yi Jing theory and Taoist Qi Gong theory and implemented them in Shaolin Chuan. By doing that, he combined the martial art with transcendence of will, consciousness and body harmony in accordance with nature and Tao itself. There are many stories about the development of Tai Chi Chuan. The most famous one is that he was inspired by watching a bird and a snake fight. When the bird flew away without its prey, he realized the strength of the softer path. With that idea, he created Tai Chi Chuan. After his death, there were many famous masters. Wang Zong, Wang Zong Yue, Chen Tong Zhou, and finally, Yiang Fa, who was the first to teach the Chen family. Even before Zan San Feng, there were martial arts similar to Tai Chi Chuan. A hermit named Xu Xuan Peng was teaching San Shi Qi in the time of Tang Dynasty. Xu's Tai Chi Chuan was called that because it had 37 moves, similar to 13 moves of Chen style. Xu's method required performance of individual figures first, and then it switched into a uniform and connected movement, with eight triagrams on the hands and five elements under the feet. His form, in accordance with Tai Chi principles, was called Long Chuan because of its continuity. Li Tao Zi also from the time of Tang Dynasty, was another expert of this era. He developed Long Chuan, which he named Xian Tian Chuan, which in a way means a state before the creation of the universe. Through his student, Yu Lian Zhou, the tradition has been passed down from generation to generation. Han Gong Yue lived and taught in the time of Liang Dynasty, he was an expert of Tai Chi martial art. He developed a system which he named Nine Little Heaven. The system included 14 movements, including Ti Shou Shang Shi, playing the lute left and right, Dan Bian, grasp Sparrow's tail, and Lan Chue Wei, the same figures as in later Yang's Tai Chi Chuan. There were many Tai Chi martial arts before Zan San Feng, but he achieved a sort of unification. From narrow warrior starts, he added Taoist Qigong and the use of Yi Jing principles. And like Zan San Feng himself said, the expansion of Tai Chi Chuan would help people enjoy long and healthy life. He actually transformed Tai Chi Chuan from martial techniques into a way of maintaining fitness of the body, consciousness and spirit, and at the same time enabling progress through a process of complete calmness into a world of four dimensions. In the Chen family documents, the first description of Tai Chi Chuan dates in the time of Chen Wan Ting, born in the Henan province. As an officer, he was stationed in the San Tung province in 1618. He returned home in the time of Ming Dynasty in 1644. When he started teaching Tai Chi Chuan, there were five routines or lus in the system. He also taught an additional two lus. The first lu was Pao Chi, which means the punches are quick and violent like cannonballs. The second lu was Long Chuan, which had 108 movements. From generation to generation, there were many teaching methods. In fifth generation, Chen Chang Xin combined and simplified the Chen system into a first routine of Tai Chi Chuan and second routine of Pao Chi. Chen You Ben simplified the movement and submitted all techniques strictly to combat. Chen Yin Ping implemented more dynamic and firm circular moves into Chen. Even though he respected the principle of not changing the original actions, the names of the moves didn't change 
but the figures were changed with additional circular movement at each step. He divided Chen into three subcategories. Tai Chi Chuan was a family secret and a treasure of knowledge of Chen family. Trainings and demonstrations of the art took place in the family circle and it occurred very rarely that the art was shown outside the circle. Chen Chang Xin taught his relatives the old style and there were only two people who didn't belong to the family, Yang Lu Chan and Li Bo Qi. Especially Yang has proven himself with patience and effort in training this martial art. Yang Lu Chan was born in 1799 in Hebei province, North China. Very soon he started practicing martial arts beginning with a form of hard Shaolin style, which had 33 moves. One of his teachers recognized the extraordinary talent and recommended training within bigger system. He suggested training with Chen family. Yang's request for training Tai Ji Chuan with Chen family was denied, but he stayed there as a worker on the property. He secretly observed their training and when Chen Chang Xin discovered Yang's true intention and talent, he took him in his group and taught him all the skills, techniques and secrets of Tai Chi Chuan. After completing his training with Chen family, he returned home where he was teaching a few friends and neighbors. He was very successful. At that time, Tai Chi Chuan was called Hua Chuan, or the neutralization form, and also Mian Chuan, or soft form that can turn defense into offense, all by path of softness. After a few years, he moved to Beijing, where he was teaching the imperial family. That is how Yang's Tai Chi Chuan has already become very popular. Yang Lu Chan had three sons. The firstborn died, but the other two, Yang Yu, also known as Ban Ho and Yang Jian trained with their father and achieved great fame and admiration. When Yang Lu Chan got old, his son Yang Yu took over the training. There are many stories about him and his tournament victories. In addition to the big forum, which is a bit different from Yang Tseng Fu's, Guang Ping Yang Forum, that was considered lost, was also passed on. It was created by Yang Lu Chan and passed on through Yang Ban Ho. Today, it has two variants that are very different from each other. The form has 64 moves, the same as the number of I Ching hexagrams, and is considered a long form. Positions in this form are lower and wider and more open. It contains the elements of Xing Ji Chuan and Ba Gua Zhang, which is reflected in spiral turns. The center of gravity is lower, while the head is upright. Every step is looking for the center, balance or change. Yang Lu Chan's other son, Yang Jian, had a very soft character, and thus he was a complete opposite of Ban Ho. He was teaching a great number of students. He was teaching big, middle and small figures. His achievements in harmony of firmness and at the same time softness were unbelievable for that time. He had three sons, Zhao Xiong, Zhao Yuan and Zhao Qing. The most famous of them is Zhao Qing, better known as Yang Tseng Fu. Yang's long form has become and it's still the most popular among the people around the world. Wu Yu Xiang was Yang Lu Chan's student. His brother was a high official in Henan province. When he visited his brother in this province, he tried to learn Tai Chi Chuan from Chen Chang Xin. He wanted to learn the first forum and Pao Chi as well. When he arrived to Zhao Bao, the town after which the forum was named, he found Chen Ying Ping. As previously mentioned, Chen Ying Ping was very successful and was teaching Chen routine Xiao Jia. Wu's Tai Chi Chuan was also called Xiao Jia. 
Tiao means small and Jia means form. With years of practice and knowledge that Wu gained, he wrote a famous book, Thirteen Rings, in which he described and explained the secrets and practice of Tai Chi Chuan. Wu himself didn't have many students. Probably the most famous among them is Li Yi Yu, and his theories are nowadays still indispensably passed on to newer texts. Tai Chi Chuan can be divided into four categories. Shuai Zhao, or how to tackle your opponent, throws and trips. Qin Na, or controlling the opponent by joint manipulation. And Ti and Da, or punching and kicking. Many techniques are a combination of two or three categories. Transitions from one category to another are common. For example, Qin Na wrist lock in combination with Shuai Zhao throw. A more detailed analysis of Tai Chi Chuan and training methods will be available in the forthcoming videos. Form with application is presented in a way that best shows movement and possible applications within a form. In the first part, there is a majority of self-defense techniques. In the second and third parts, we have connected different figures in a routine to be practiced with an opponent. However, this is only one of many possible ways of applying techniques. But the applications themselves belong to the first and partly second level. When watching the great forum of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, we need to understand how the sequences were created and what their purpose is. Often, especially nowadays, People see Tai Chi Chuan sequence as dancing or meditative movement, an abstract movement. A good understanding of the formation of Tai Chi Chuan and its roots will lead you to correct and successful practice. A battle sequence or form contains techniques of a specific style. Chinese battle sequences have two or three levels of battle techniques or applications. The first level are usually applications of moves and they represent the basics of the style. The second level is more complex and is not necessarily a part of movement or sequence. The third level is the hardest one and it contains the most efficient techniques of the style. The third level techniques have more steps than the sequence and they have to be explained and analyzed with the master himself. As we can see, the Chinese battle sequences served many purposes. A sequence is used to maintain the essence of a specific style and its techniques. It represents a sort of book or a record in which all the basics and knowledge of a specific style is kept. Sequences are used for training of individual techniques within a style. When a student regularly practices a sequence, he can master the techniques and build a good basis in his style. A sequence is used for practicing patience, persistence and strength, as well as basic positions, individual moves or combinations of moves and techniques. A sequence is also used to build a sense of the opponent. And with that sense, the techniques become alive and useful in a real combat. The sequence or form of Tai Chi Chuan was developed with the same purposes. In any case, as an internal style, it develops breathing coordination with Qi or internal energy, as well as Qi's with movement. That is why the Tai Chi Chuan form is slow at first, and when the moves are precise and fluent, it becomes fast. Tai Chi Chuan has many different versions that may have 23, 37, 81, 88, 105 or more moves. It is important how we count the moves and they only contain from 37 to 40 basic techniques. These represent the basis for more than 250 possible applications. In a sequence many moves or groups of moves repeat several times and there are a couple of reasons for that. Improvement of more important and useful techniques. Repetitions usually cause quicker mastering of the techniques. 
For example, avoiding, pulling, pushing and pressing represent the most basic group of moves or part of the form. In the long yang form, they repeat eight times. <laughs>